I will explore some of the hottest business and economic topics. The thing is, at least it's in the Philippines, because there's always going to be a conflict at some point between commercial considerations and social considerations. Well, how does the crop insurance extend to the credit as well? Whenever a bank lends to either rice or corn, by law, that loan must be covered by crop insurance. Good evening and welcome to Eye on Business. And as usual, I'm Ben Kritz. Taxes. Nobody likes taxes. I don't like taxes. Do you like taxes? Of course you don't. Taxes, though, are to trade off the price we pay for living in what we would like to believe is an orderly society. And so we grin and bear it and contribute our share. Over the past couple of years, the government of the Philippines has gotten a bit better at collecting taxes, and that has led to a great many changes in what and how much taxes we pay. And if the Duterte administration has its way, there's going to be some more changes in the next two years. Uh, the government's comprehensive tax reform program has a total of five packages, and only one of those, which we know is train, has been passed so far. Now, uh, taxes are a responsibility, and unavoidably, they're a cost, but they don't necessarily have to be a burden. Joining me this evening to help explain how individuals and businesses can understand and manage taxes better so that they don't become a financial hardship and maybe even find a little advantage in it is one of the Philippines' foremost tax experts. He's the founding chairman of the Asian Consulting Group and the co-chair of the Ease of Doing Business Task Force on Paying Taxes. He's also the founding president of the Center for Strategic Reforms of the Philippines, uh, CSR Philippines, which is the advocacy partner of the Bureau of Internal Revenue and the Department of Trade and Industry on the Ease of Doing Business. He's also been recognized as one of the outstanding young persons of the world, one of the 10 outstanding young men of the Philippines, and a distinguished Baden in the field of accounting and taxation. And if that's not enough, he is also the recipient of the Metro Bank Foundation's Award for Continuing Excellence in Services, the ACES Award. Now, as part of his uh, advocacy of tax education and reform, he's established what's called the Tax Wiz Academy and provides tax seminars, tax publications, and the Tax Wiz, tax Wiz PH mobile app, which we'll hear a little bit more about later. And he's also the best-selling author of Got a Question About Taxes, Ask the Tax, tax Wiz, and this book here, Iwis Buisit, What to Do When Taxes Attack. Would you please welcome Mr. Mon Abrea. Mon, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ben. And do you understand what Buisit means? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, I, I, as I say, I, I, I get a sense of the word. Yeah, um, when, when and we, I've been known to say it a few times. When too. we launched it with the BAR Commissioner, Billy Dulay, mm -hmm. he said, why he was buis, which is tax. No, it's not buis, it's buisit, mm. which is the problem, the yeah. irritant. The what, was his, what was his reaction to that? Because uh, that, that Well, actually, mm. it's, a, it's a way to get the attention of people. Mm -hmm. that rather than just avoiding taxes, I think it's high time that we try to educate ourselves and uh, do it the right way. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let, let's start with the, the comprehensive tax reform mm. program. Uh, which, starting in 2016, they began implementing some huge changes in the tax structure of this country. Um, what is your take on it? As a tax expert, um, are things better now than they have been, you know, in, in well, the past? Um, um, has, the, has the tax reform worked in favor mm -hmm. of individuals and small businesses, or is it a little bit harder to to handle it now. Actually, Ben, we have to give the credit to the government for at least trying to look into the problem and accept that there is really so much inefficiency. Mm -hmm. And that's a good start. 
and that was 2016 mm -hmm. when we started talking about the comprehensive tax reform which ideally is to address the inefficiency and make it more simple fair and practically um, uh, good for small businesses mm -hmm. or what we call the startups and the micro msmes mm -hmm. uh, but in reality the implementation is not as simple as that so if you will ask me the intention is good but there's so much homework and uh, discussion that needs to be done and should not be avoided Right. Like, for instance, the issue on smuggling, tax evasion, and the corrupt BIR examiners. These are the things that we don't blame to the president, nor to the commissioner, but are apparently still there. Right. And which we hope that in the, before the end of this administration will slowly be addressed because of the ongoing tax reform. Well, let me ask you about that. Um, since you, you, know, you do work closely with the government in a couple of different respects, um, what is, there, what is the feedback you get when you raise these issues with them? Um, you know, we've, we've talked about the Bureau of Customs, for mm -hmm. instance. The Bureau of Customs has been a chronic problem, mm -hmm. and we don't necessarily blame mm -hmm. the leadership now, yes. but they've had this systemic problem of corruption for years, and the BIR kind of the same way. So what do they tell you? When or, you know, well, the good thing here, Ben, is that first, uh, as you have mentioned earlier, we are the advocacy partner of both the BIR and the DTI in promoting the ease of doing business, mm -hmm. including the tax reform. So whenever I, I speak with the commissioner, the deputy commissioners, and the rest of the uh, BIR officials, I don't just blame them or criticize them. We always discuss it objectively. What seemingly is the problem or what's taking it too long, why the, the clearance or the process is not favorable to the taxpayers or how do we get rid of all these corrupt practices. And uh, honestly, they're more open. And most of them were there even before Duterte. Yeah, so I can uh, honestly tell you there was a change of heart and uh, the acceptance. They're more open to ideas and they're actually working with us, especially in educating the public. Mm -hmm. Because Ben, at the end of the day, no matter how ideal the tax system, the policies are, if the taxpayers are ignorant or not compliant, it's useless. No one will pay taxes. Right. We have to win the hearts of the taxpayers, mm -hmm. see where their taxes go, and at the same time make their lives uh, a lot better mm -hmm. rather than crucifying them because of the long process, the forms, and the bureaucracy in every step. Yeah, well, that's just it. And I think that happens in every country, exactly. too. You know, I get to do it in two mm -hmm. countries myself, mm -hmm. um, and our tax system is a, a headache. Um, now, you've dealt with... You've dealt with individual taxes you know what falls under the train mm -hmm. part of the law in your book and in your seminars mm -hmm. and things and i know you also do a lot for business but let's talk about the satira mm -hmm. the corporate tax reform okay. just a little bit because that is uh that is a big issue mm -hmm. for for a lot of people and that's an important mm -hmm. that's an important part of the whole program mm -hmm. and just uh, just this morning um there was a there was a statement from the European Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. uh, saying that they should cut 5% off the corporate income tax right away, mm -hmm. uh, which would kind of tend to throw a wrench into mm -hmm. a process that is already delayed. Mm -hmm. um, what do you hear about the passage of mm -hmm. the corporate tax reform? Well, uh, actually, the, the supposedly the lowering of corporate income tax is a no-brainer. I mean, everyone knows that we need it, mm -hmm. and it's already overdue that we, had, we have the highest corporate income tax in the ASEAN region. Right. That's given. It's, it's a, a fact of life, and no one is contesting that. Mm -hmm. However, the upsetting mindset of the Department of Finance make it a little complicated because they bundled it with the rationalization. And the opposition is not on the lowering of corporate income tax. The issue is on the fiscal rationalization. Right. Most of our foreign investors feel that the government will be taking away all the incentives that were provided under the, the in, cur, in, uh, current regulations, mm -hmm. which will be wiped out by the Sipira. But again, my position is we need to lower the corporate income tax, as uh, the European Chamber already mentioned. I supported the immediate uh, lowering from 30 to 25, right. then down to 20 before the president steps down. Otherwise, we'll never be sure if the next president will prioritize tax reform. I see. Um, just, just real quick, in your in your seminars and and uh, you know some of the educational work do you do? Do you uh, do you work at all with uh, with businesses to try to explain 
what the you know proposed changes to the yes, rationalization make, we, are. Yeah, we make sure that the good and the bad, the mm -hmm. pros and the cons are discussed. We uh, we avoid just leaving them with an opinion that will uh, make them uh, give them a blind sight of the entire picture. Like for instance, the comprehensive tax reform. It really has good objectives and a lot of plans. But as I have mentioned earlier, it's more of the implementation that is the issue rather than the policy. But with the, with the different packages, there are a lot of factors or industries or sectors which should be consulted even more so that they don't feel sacrificed or compromised in the process. I see. Okay. Let's take a short break. And I'm back with Mon Abrea, the Philippine tax whiz. Uh, I want to ask you something. Agree or disagree with this statement? Okay. People and or businesses do not manage taxes as well as they can because they are not aware of or in the course of doing their business do not account for all the taxes that they have to pay. I agree. Okay. In fact, the only time that they seek uh, advice is when BIR is already running after them. I see. <laughs> so, so how, how uh, now, um, like I said, Dave, you've, talked about, you've talked about some of that in this book here. <laughs> it was is, visit. Yeah, which is exactly how to keep yourself out of trouble and exactly. keep the BIR from running after you. I think you. there's a better way of explaining the book, mm -hmm. to keep yourself out of trouble. <laughs> yes. Um, but... Uh, what, what, is, uh, what are some things that, that let, let's take it from the individual level, mm -hmm. first of all. Um, you know, people like those mm -hmm. of us in this room who just, you know, we, we have a job and we have, our, mm -hmm. we have our taxes every year plus the VAT that we pay when we mm -hmm. go to the store and various excise taxes and things. How can people manage that? Um, you know, how, what should they be aware of and how can they, you know, how, how can they keep their tax bill lower? Mm -hmm. Or, or at least keep track of it so that they don't have mm, the BIR problems. come after yeah. them. Well, Ben, the first thing is know your registration. A lot of our taxpayers are not even sure how they were registered or someone else registered on their behalf. I see. Or they were doing freelancing but it's not registered. Mm -hmm. Or they, are, they have multiple employment or source of income but it's not declared. So know first your registration. Are you registered as an employee only or as a mixed income earner? as a sole proprietor or freelancer or as a professional. Because earning income is a one, but having yourself registered correctly is another. Then the second one is once you know your registration, the taxes will follow. What are the taxes applicable to you? I hate to say this, but a lot of us are afraid of BIR. What is BIR doing? They're simply collecting what is supposed to be due. Right. But a lot of us are either ignorant or in denial that we are supposed to pay these taxes. So, once you registered with, you, with the BIR, know what are the taxes that you need to pay. Mm -hmm. But there is, a, there is a, um, like a horror story there. A lot of those who have registered themselves were registered with the different tax types, which are not applicable to them. I said, well, how, what happens when, when... BIR starts collecting those taxes. Right. And that's the only time that you say, oh, I didn't know I was registered. Do you want BIR to do it for you? It should have been your assignment to make sure that you I were see. first registered and that you know what taxes were you registered into? Mm -hmm. Are there, is this income tax only, VAT, non-VAT, withholding taxes, uh, final tax? Well, there are a lot of taxes, but the reality is not all these taxes are being collected from you. Right. And it is you who goes to BIR and register yourself. So if you register yourself with all these taxes, you should be responsible enough to know and to file and to pay them. You know, I, think the, I think one of the big complaints of people, though, and uh, you know, I, have, I have friends that are freelancers mm -hmm. you know, that, that try to register. You know, they're, they're smart enough. They find out how they should be registered and then will try to register mm -hmm. themselves properly and keep up with their taxes mm -hmm. because running into trouble with the BIR yes. as a freelancer can be disastrous. Exactly. Um, but they, the biggest complaint is that it is so frustrating and so complicated to actually do that mm -hmm. um, that some of them just give up. 
you know, and try to Well, stay then I will the agree with you before the train law. Uh -huh. But after the train law, I think your friends did not read the train law. Because the train law is very clear that there, are, there is now a simple way of doing it. Mm -hmm. If you are a startup, a freelancer, and your gross income is below 3 million, the train law will classify you as a small taxpayer. And that only requires you or gives you an optional 8% tax. No more VAT, no more percentage, no separate income tax. But a quarterly tax payment, mm -hmm. four times a year, Ben. If it's still difficult for our freelancers, I honestly don't think what is simple for them. Yeah. But it is only up to $3 million. Mm -hmm. But now, again, we talk about what you were registered or your registration. And the next one is, how much are you really earning? Because mm -hmm. if you exceed $3 million, the train law will require you to pay value-added tax. Mm -hmm. But under the train law as well, Ben, if you reach $8 million or even higher, it will impose a higher income tax rate at 35% even higher than the corporate income tax at 30 percent right and i am now telling uh the the our viewers and the, your friends that you should consider the one person corporation and change your registration from individual to a corporation Actually. why because the rate will be smaller yeah. or lower for a corporation and, so, it, may, and it may soon be even 20 percent yeah. exactly so again at uh, the end of the day honestly I think it's really more of the right information than their issue with BIR or the taxes. Well, that's, because the taxes is not doing anything to them. That's exactly what happens is, you know, the, the information is, um, you know, there's not a lot of people like you, you know. L like me? I'm that, a bad that, person. That, 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 that make the information mm -hmm. so clear to, to people. And, you know, you, you may disagree with this, but the impression that you get from talking to people is that the BIR is mm -hmm. still not doing a very good job of making that information that clear. Um, um, I cannot 100% agree with you on that because we uh, work with a lot of BIR officials now. Mm -hmm. But probably with some of our traditional and old examiners, mm -hmm. that their mindset is just to collect and they don't care what happens to you, whether you go to a loan shark or close your business, I would, uh, I would right. really be, I feel for the taxpayer if mm -hmm. that is the type of the, uh, examiner who will deal with you. But yes, I agree that the BIR should be making things simple and the information campaign awareness should be heightened. And I think that's where we also come in, media and advocates, to make sure that we provide uh, uh, information in different forms mm -hmm. and different platforms, especially with social media. Uh, we try to encourage BIR to make use of Facebook. So for our viewers, they can actually search Bureau of Internal Revenue Philippines. That's their official Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And I have talked to the one in charge. They're really updating it. But the problem is they're only posting deadlines. So I told them, um, can you come up with some jokes? Like <laughs> They said, no, it's a serious page. Yeah, I know. But all I see are deadlines. You know, it's threatening. Uh, who is happy with deadlines? It's deadline. So <laughs> it's hard to really well, well, people, yeah, be excited they, they, about they, it. They need, to, they, they need to have somebody willing to sit there and answer questions. Mm -hmm. um, well, we try to do that with yeah, our yeah. social media campaign and mm -hmm. with the celebrities who are helping us. Like this February, the BIR will be launching their annual kickoff. For the annual file income tax return filing, right. we will again be tapping uh, a lot of celebrities to make sure they talk about their uh, reminders, what to uh, prepare, where to file, where, what to pay, mm -hmm. and use the online platforms not to go to fixers or get uh, uh, screwed with the scammers and fixers all over the place. Right. So I, I guess these are uh, innovations and improvements that uh, we have to acknowledge as well that Gone are the days that it's really like getting into a dark room that you don't really know what will happen after. Right. Now there are well, more answers, there are more platforms available. Yeah, I, you know, I think I think that's one thing that you could do with your message is, is it, it would help the BIR out too and maybe encourage them to, to work a little faster is, <laughs> you know, I, I think it, you know, pe people, people have gotten used to decades of the BIR being scary and, and opaque. And, you know, if people understood, you know, that, yes, you know, we realize mm -hmm. this is how it was and they are working on it, you know, but they're working on it. And if you still run into problems, please let us know mm -hmm. what the problem is and, Agreed. you know, and, and we can work on it some more. Um, I don't think that's really 
quite happening yet, mm -hmm. you know, and that might well, be. Well, uh, with, with, with the ease of doing business, there's already now a, 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 not just a window, but a door that opens for taxpayers who, mm -hmm. uh, who are not happy or uh, who feel that the BIR is uh, causing delay, unnecessary delay and uh, charging unnecessary penalties. Uh, in fact, it is required that in all government agencies, including BIR, that they post in their lobby or entrance all the services or processes that they do and classify it as either simple, technical, or, uh, right. or difficult. And there are prescribed days, seven, 3, 7, 20. So mm -hmm. if you exceed three days or you waited more than three days, you can complain already. And the in-charge can be suspended and terminated. And that okay. is according to the new law. Uh -huh. And it's funny because we need to, to pass a law that reminds our government employees not to delay the process. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so that's fine. So the, the person in charge can get in trouble. But the problem remains, you know, the process was still slow. So, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes the, the, sometimes the process is slow because the person in charge is, mm -hmm. you know, not playing mm -hmm. along. Or, and sometimes the process is slow because these are very old processes <laughs> yeah, that have been embedded for a mm -hmm. long time and need to be changed. And that's where mm -hmm. I think technology will come in. Mm -hmm. That uh, it, the government really has to invest on the digitalization and making sure our personnel are updated and uh, trained to uh, to make sure that they provide not just the fastest but the best service to our uh, citizens. I see. Okay, let's take another short break. mga isyung pinag-usapan, mga palitang laman ng pahayagan. Informasyong dapat niyong malaman, tatalakayin, pupusisiin, at hihimayin ni Mario Garcia kasama ang kanyang mga panauhin sa harap ng bayan. Face Off! And we're back with Mana Brea. Okay, you're, you are uh, involved in two, two different... Um, organizations that are working with the government and I want to talk about each of those. First is the Ease of Doing Business tax, Task Force on Paying Taxes mm -hmm. and then the second is the Center for Strategic Reforms of the Philippines Incorporated. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, tell us uh, what, what, is the, what is the purpose and what do you do with the EODB Task force. Well, the EODB task force was created uh, to make sure that we will improve our competitive ranking uh, in the ease of doing business uh, by the World Bank. Mm -hmm. um, uh, private sector representatives were selected so that they can uh, that, uh, so that they can represent not just their industry but to make sure that improvements will be ongoing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where I come in because there is a paying taxes. Uh, category the in the paying taxes category in the east of the business traditionally been very bad exactly and that's the reason why we consider not just the process but also the cost that's why it's important or it's imperative in the reform that we start lowering the rates because even if we improve the process if it's still costly our ranking will not change or will not improve mm -hmm. And uh, the ease of doing business is really very productive and helpful because it's a regular meeting and uh, uh, I, can, I can say uh, collaboration between the private sector and the government uh, agencies because we sit with the, the commissioners, the heads of agencies who are really involved in leading the agency concerned as, as the specific service, whether uh, BIR, Customs, SSS, Pag-ibig, PhilHealth, LGU, specifically Quezon City. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think to me that's uh, really an opportunity to work together to make sure that doing business will really improve. And what, what, are, some, what are some areas where you know, you've, really, you've really seen a problem and that they've been able to give me some examples of some things that have really sure. gotten repaired. Exactly. For this. instance, before uh, when you uh, register a business, to start a business, uh, it may take you at least a year and you still don't have the permit, the books of accounts, the receipts, and they will start penalizing you when you haven't completed even your registration. Now, when you go to a BIR, there's a single window and before you leave the office of the BIR, you're done with the registration. Mm -hmm. Because they won't sell you anymore the books of accounts. They won't sell you the receipts. They will provide you a BIR printed receipt. And you will not be forced to buy columnar books from them because it will not be uh, uh, necessary anymore. You can uh, use whatever, whether Excel or whatever platform mm -hmm. as long as you can provide documentation once they audit you. 
That's, that's so it's really simplifying uh, from the starting, uh, from the registration phase. That's one thing that I've noticed personally over the, I've been here for quite a long time. It's one thing I've noticed personally is that, you know, they, they are moving, they are moving into the 21st century. You know, <laughs> Finally. As, yeah, as far as, uh, how, how is, how is that coming along? I mean, what, how, you know, what, what are they putting towards digitization? Well, the, the end goal really is to allow everyone to register uh, in all government agencies in using one platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the Secretary of Trade and Industry, uh, uh, Ramon Lopez, is really eyeing to even use the mobile app since most of us are using mobile applications. I see. And uh, I am hoping that it will really happen. How far away is that? Well, they have already uh, uh, contacted uh, developers. I think they are already in the phase of uh, doing the prototype. And uh, it's not, it's not uh, that difficult because it's really a matter of putting everything in one platform. Remember that the SEC has their, their online registration, uh, the LGUs, they have their separate registration, SSS, pag -ibig. We just want to link everything. So they want to just take all of these because, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. Most agencies do have some form of online, automation. Yeah, I mean, on, don't on, let, let's acknowledge it. There, yes. So they are trying to take yeah. all of those disparate Link things it together so that there will only be one, one window or one platform for a business, whether small or large. And mm -hmm. particularly uh, because we are, um, I mean, geographically, we are at a disadvantage. If you are in the province, it's hard to register because how many uh, government agencies are available in all provinces? Some may have to leave their province and go to uh, the other province or city or municipality. And uh, that's an, an added cost but if we can uh, really provide the online platform or at least the one-stop shop where all the agencies are there and I, that will really cut the cost mm -hmm. for uh, those who would like to start a business okay all right so um, now let's talk about the Center for Strategic Reforms the CSR mm -hmm. Philippines is as, as an advocacy partner we're really more of education and reform platform, mm -hmm. meaning whatever the government is doing, we make sure that the recipients or the stakeholders will get to understand and benefit from them. And the reform, whatever is seemingly bad or not so good, we have to tell to the government agency concerned so that they, we provide them alternatives or recommendations. So we're not the type that will just criticize and throw tomatoes and you are bad. You're, no, we offer alternatives already. And if we can do it for them, like with, for BIR, mm -hmm. rather than complaining, you're not informing public. Uh, no, we'll just do it for them. We tell the commissioner, commissioner, we will start this campaign. We will ask your uh, comms group to provide us the final uh, details, and we will blast it and provide in, uh, information in all platforms, whether through our seminars, through our publications, or social media, and with the aid of uh, traditional media, TV, mm -hmm. radio, uh, and, of course, let's not forget the celebrities. I mean, they will always have a, a, a huge influence to a lot of Filipinos. Mm -hmm. And them talking about, hey, tomorrow is the deadline. Let us not forget. We end we need to pay taxes. Let us help the country. Nation building. I mean, sometimes it, it appears superficial, but the effort is important that we continuously exert effort to reach out to every Filipino. I, see. I guess CSR Philippines is very helpful in that respect. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so you're in, a, you're in a kind of role. You, you translate what's, what changes are yes. into into public information. Mm -hmm. Infographics sometimes. And, and, and then you serve as the conduit or whenever this particular reform has taken place and it's mm -hmm. been implemented and it turns out to be a dud. <laughs> um, you know, can you, and you, you, you give back to the BIR. Yeah, we give okay, them feedback. This, and This is how it's really working. It's not as it was on paper. Exactly. You need to change it this way. Yeah. So that's, In fact, that's there good. are a lot of... Um, <clears throat> Uh, issuances by the commissioner, mm -hmm. uh, which were a result of a lot of uh, consultations and discussions with this office. Mm -hmm. Primarily because when we do uh, roundtable discussions, seminars, in fact, even interviews off camera, the, the, the host or the people in the studio will, will share with you experiences. And if I find it really uh, a, a concern, I immediately elevate it to the office of the commissioner. Mm -hmm. And him acting on it, issuing a memorandum, like for instance, a very good thing that the commissioner just did recently related to the Taal eruption, that he issued a, a, a memorandum announcing that you don't need to rush in filing. Everyone affected in Batangas region, you don't need to file uh, immediately, you will be given extension without penalties. Because, you know, yeah. all of us are afraid of penalties. Yeah. 
But it's a relief for these businesses who are affected by the tal eruption. Well, that, I mean, they have no choice. I mean, but know, remember, yeah. during the Yolanda, the Yolanda incident, it didn't happen. That's true. I yeah, was yeah, literally yeah. complaining. Uh, why the hell um, are we uh, asking them to file? That, that, that's true. There was there was actually <laughs> some news reports <laughs> exactly. about that. People were furious that yeah. you know. They, I mean, they, they've lost. They have lost not just their businesses, their peace of mind, their houses, everything that they have. The least mm -hmm. that the government can do is to make them feel that the government is there for them yeah. not after their assets right yeah. which they no longer have and as i have said yeah. um, these are good improvements let's uh -huh. give the credit to whom the credit is due yeah no, that, that is true um now as far as one one thing that i'm one thing that i'm interested in as far as small businesses are concerned particularly there's been a lot of change a lot of rapid changes mm -hmm. and as a matter of fact there's just some coming up now uh in things like like excise taxes mm -hmm. Uh, you're a small store that's selling <laughs> booze to the guys on the corner, and you're going to have a slight change in the taxes yeah. here in about uh, about a week's time, I think. Yes, yes. Um, you know, so how how does you know? Um, what do what do businesses need to do to stay on top of that? Mm -hmm. um, you know, other I, than honestly, Ben, when it comes to uh, cigarettes and alcohol, I don't think they can do anything if they want to do it legit. Mm -hmm. Because the worst case is that they patronize the black market. Right. That because of the higher excise tax, they will get their supplies from the smugglers and the, mm -hmm. I mean the, the underground mar the underground economy, which is proliferating. And we have said this. A lot of economists uh, said that that's the uh, not so good implication of high increasing the excise tax. Not that the government wanted it or that they planned it, but that's the unintended consequence. Mm -hmm. If you increase the taxes of legit supplies, then the uh, smuggled goods will be more uh, attractive and saleable. And that is exactly what's happening. That's why I uh, re keep reiterating that hopefully as we increase the excise tax, which is due, I mean, that's fine, alcohol, cigarettes, right. uh, let those who are into those vices pay the price. But we need to make sure we do not kill the industry just because the underground economy is not being taxed at all. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, is there any... Uh, you know, the tax is paid on those things when, yeah. you know, the little store buys it. So they don't have any additional accounting. No, you know, no work for work the they, stores. They have to no do. work for our sellers because once they receive the goods, the excise are already uh, embedded in the price. Okay. So, so that's not, that's not going to change. Yeah. And if they are all play, uh, if they're all legit uh, uh, players, they, they, it's not a problem because all of them are burdened by that excise tax. Mm -hmm. It goes with their cost. Right. The, the real problem is, the, the underground economy because they are not taxed at all. Yeah. So that's the real challenge for our small uh, sellers or sorry, sorry stores. I see. Okay. Let's take one final break. The Philippines has been around for centuries. Malayo na rin ang narating natin. But back then, the way of life has been mostly analog. Did you know that you need to take a boat from Cavite in order to go to Manila? Yes, ganon ang takbo ng buhay dati. You need to send a letter to the United States? Sure, pero aabutin ka ng isang buwan bago matanggap ang iyong liham. Kailangan mong tumawag sa bahay o sa iyong kaibigan? Many ways to do that. Pwede ka maghulog ng tatlong 25 sa payphone or use that vintage rotary phone na most likely 6 digits lang ang landline number. Forget about email. Telex at fax machine ang modes of communication for business. You want to listen to that one song of your favorite band on repeat? Sorry, pero kailangan mong i-rewind ang cassette tape. Buong album naman ang kailangan mong bilhin kahit iisang kanta lang ang gusto mo doon. But things change and we as a race progress. The world is getting small. We are now a traveling population. Why? Because travel is now cheap. Our friends are across the world because our form of communication is now borderless. Time zones are now meant to serve as a guide and not as a limitation. We can buy things from the comfort of our homes. Nasanay na tayo sa convenience because why not? It is the price of development and the glimpse of our future. Have you imagined the future? How do you think it will look like? Driverless cars? Yes, autonomous driving will happen. Robots replacing low-value processes done by humans? Tama ka dyan. Paying for your groceries using digital currency? Very realistic. 
Materials being 3D printed instead of ordering? Yes, we are indeed a progressive race. And technology plays a vital and crucial part of it. How will this affect our lives? Kailangan ba natin itong matutunan? Mahirap ba itong aralin? Or kaya naman? How can our nation take advantage of these advancements? All of these can be understood and learned. Tayo ng matuto para umunlad. Nandito na ang Abante. Progress through technology. And I'm back with Mana Brea, the Philippine tax whiz. Okay, you're the founder of the Asian Consulting Group. Yes. And you can explain to me a little bit about, mm -hmm. about what that is and, and what yeah. do you do. It's funny because uh, I don't know if you were informed, but I am a former BIR examiner. That's how we started the advocacy. Mm -hmm. I was asked to go to BIR to study the corrupt system. When we got out, we started the advocacy, but we don't have money. So rather than begging for money we, uh, and people coming to me and making, trying to make me a fixer, we legitimize what we're doing and make it a professional service. And that's how the Asian Consulting Group was started. Our commitment is to really help you and everyone else to pay your taxes correctly without penalties and under the table. Mm -hmm. Re without that, 100%. Yeah. So that's what that's we do. That's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we already launched our mobile app to make sure that the self-employed and professionals, they don't need to pay us or any consultants. They can just use their mobile app to file and their and taxes. Tell, tell, tell me a little bit about that. What's, what's that? What's it called and uh, yeah, you know, okay. where can they find it and what can it do? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, our advocacy started uh, 10 years ago. And for the last 10 years, we've been using the tax Swiss, the tax Swiss, the Philippine tax Swiss as a way to give taxpayers hope and the uh, uh, opportunity to ask their questions. Mm -hmm. That's why we popularized the Got a Question About Taxes, Ask the Tax Swiss. That was our first bestseller book. It's funny because it became a bestseller. It's not even about artista or mm -hmm. cookbook, but it became a bestseller and primarily because of our nationwide tax roadshow because we go to different uh, chambers and uh, business organizations. But now after 10 years, I realize that I'm not running for any public office. I have to stop using and calling myself tax suisse. So we created, we digitize it. We mm -hmm. created the mobile app. So everyone who's following us, asking us through social media, just download the app now and ask the app. Nice There's right. a ask the tax suisse uh, button there. Mm -hmm. So they can now download the mobile app, tax suisse PH, uh, in the Google Play Store. And uh, come April 15, they can file and pay their taxes using the app. Nice and it's right. for free, Ben. Ah, yeah, I'm okay. still taking the cost now. I have uh, enough savings to cover for it. Mm -hmm. But not for, uh, forever. Okay. The commissioner knows that. Yeah. Okay. But again, so. this is providing opportunity for those who are trying to come up with a lot of excuses why they cannot pay their taxes. Yeah, so, so it's free for now, folks. So get it while you can. <laughs> the Tax Whiz PH app on uh, Google Store. And, uh, do you have Hope an Apple Hopefully Apple by next month, there will be a, it right. will be available in the App Store. Okay. All right. Um, now, this is, your, this is your most recent book. Yes, it was uh, Buisit. Uh, this, was, uh, this is already uh, another bestseller. But uh, in the, in this, before the end of the quarter, we'll have another book for the online sellers and the digital platforms. I see. Okay, to make so sure they, are also, they will also not have excuses why they are not paying taxes. So, so it was Buisit is more intended for... General taxpayers, anybody, individuals, whether you're an employee, you, you are an employee, you are a professional, you started a business, uh, or you're a foundation, you want to save taxes from contribution. Oh, by the way, Ben, uh, it's important that uh, because of the Taal eruption, we talk about this tax implication. If you donated, you should be able to claim it as tax deductible. Mm -hmm. and, and every individual taxpayer can uh, donate up to 250000 tax exemption with tax exemption without uh, any hassle. So we j they just have to uh, claim it. But for those who were victimized with casualty losses because of the eruption, they have 45 days to file it to the BIR. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the BIR will not uh, co cover it as part of their deductible expenses. I see. So, I mean, these are important things that if we don't know, we'll end up paying more. When, in fact, there that's, are provisions. That, that, is, that is exactly, exactly. the problem that people I think that's why into. Is, I think that's why tax is horrifying. Yeah. Because if you don't know it, it kills you. Yes. <laughs> uh, and that's just it. And you... you, it, you in any tax system in the world, yeah. I've been in a couple of them now. Mm -hmm. you know, if you don't know what you're paying for, you're going to pay too much. Yeah. In fact, I always say during our roadshow or seminars, uh, in relationships, we always say, what you don't know won't hurt you. 
But when it comes to taxes, what you don't know will kill you That's because true. it will really catch up. Yes. Maybe not now, mm -hmm. but it will soon catch up with uh, a huge penalty. Yeah, there's no need to go into <laughs> details, but uh, I, I know a little bit about that. Uh, it's been taken care of. But. Okay. Okay, um, you conduct uh, you conduct a series of road shows yes. uh, throughout the year, and um, you've given me a schedule here, and it looks like you're going to be pretty busy. <laughs> um, why don't you tell us about uh, some of uh, sure some of the places you're going to be in partnership with the uh, BAR and DTI, and of mm -hmm. course. Uh, uh, our embassies abroad. Uh, we are doing a nationwide tax road show and OFW road shows to do investment and tax briefing, meaning really updating them of the new laws, what are the benefits, what are the things they need to prepare. Mm -hmm. So starting next week, uh, February 3 to 4, I'll be in Kidapawan City, organized by PCCI North Cotabato. Uh, February 7 to 8 in Bacolod. February 12, uh, there's a private business conference in Manila. February 14, Laguna, hopefully the Taller option is clearly cleared. 70 will be hosting our own tax hub talks at our office in Quezon City. So every quarter we will we host our, our own seminar in our office. February 20 to 22, El Nido. Uh, I'll get a tan skin there. Yeah. 27 to 28, I'll buy. Hopefully the, the volcano there will be quiet. <laughs> and of course, we start the international roadshow. March 25, I'll be in Europe. April 24, onwards, Singapore. May 21, Canada. And uh, June 5 to 20, USA. There will be a huge uh, film event uh, for the Independence Day. And I'll be one of the uh, invited speakers to educate our film, uh, both investors and those who would like to do business in the Philippines. So, where is that, where is that going to be? Washington, D.C. So, uh, okay. the Secretary of uh, Trade and Industry would always say, we should not just ask for employment. We should provide employment and more opportunities, especially for our FWs, because they have money. So, rather than just spending it, it's best to consider investing, but avoid scam mm -hmm. and starting a business, but avoid getting bankrupt or paying penalties. So that's where we come in, education and reform. I'm just, I'm just curious, um, just uh, one, one little thing I was wondering, do you work with, uh, and you don't have to say who, but do, do you work with any investment advisors? I, when, when people come to mm -hmm. you or at your seminars for, mm -hmm. for you know, Do we recommend have, do, them to go do, there? Do you have particular no. people you, you work with? No. Um, not uh, even a product that we sell, no. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, in fact, the, the gift that we give them for OFWs, if let's say you're from uh, Singapore and you decide to do business in the Philippines, you can get free consultancy from us. I see. Okay. Just to encourage you to start a business. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, so, I, I think that's I think that's something a lot of OFWs have their problems. Mm -hmm. Like, look, you know, I know I have money, mm -hmm. you know, but I need help. Yes. Um, I don't want to waste this. Yeah, we, can, we help them for free. Again, that's part of the advocacy because the great. big taxpayers here or mostly our clients, they, they pay us well. We don't need to charge the OFWs or those who are still wanting to do business. I see. Okay. Um, any final thoughts? Any, any big message that uh, you want to pass along to the public or yeah. to your your uh, colleagues in the government. Um, <laughs> well, I hope, uh, particularly the DOF, that they will uh, uh, not be too sensitive with my comments because I really want to be uh, uh, more of an advocate than just a supporter of any reform. Um, it means if I have to say uh, a dissenting opinion, then I take courage to make sure that mm. I take that opportunity because for me, we have two years before the end of the Duterte administration. Mm -hmm. If you don't get to complete the comprehensive tax reform, we go back to zero. I don't think any president will continue uh, the complicated reform that we have started. Right. So right. it really is important for us to end all this reform correctly, that we have sealed all the leakages, we have addressed smuggling, tax evasion, or at least less and corruption. Mm -hmm. So to me, uh, if we cannot deal with it, better abolish BIR and customs and create a new one. Yeah, which... Otherwise, it, we will be, the next president will be inheriting the same problem. Yeah. Well, and starting over again, I think, would be more trouble than it's worth. So exactly. maybe they should listen to and you. And we all have to work together on this. We mm -hmm. cannot just wait and see. We have to air our sentiments. We have to work with our congressmen, our senators, listen to the media. Don't just share links. Read it. Understand it before giving your opinion. Because every opinion counts, especially with social media. Mm -hmm. You have to make use of that. It's like voting. If we support the reform, like the syntax, then we share it with our opinion. But make sure we are informed properly. I see. That's a good words to live by. Okay. Well, managing taxes can be confusing, but they don't have to be a burden. Um, and they are for many people. 
but as we found out, it's mainly a matter of not having enough information or not asking the right questions. Fortunately, there's people like Montebrea and the people he works with here to help you out, and you should seriously consider looking for the TaxWiz PH app, which can give you a lot of information, and you know, read the news, listen to, listen to programs like this, maybe think about buying this book. <laughs> uh, it's actually very interesting, which is an odd thing to say about a subject like taxes, but you, know, you will learn something. Uh, hopefully, we've been able to give you some insights into how you can manage your taxes better and if at least, if not save you money, at least keep you out of trouble, which is uh, one thing that nobody wants. I'd like to thank my guest, the Philippine Tax Whiz, uh, Mr. Monabrea, who's from the Asian Consulting Group, among other things. Um, thank you very much for joining us. and sharing this information okay. this evening. I'm Ben Kritz, and this has been Eye on Business.